Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 8, The Prince of Winterfell. Uh, if you go around the internet, a lot of people were complaining about this episode. There's the book purists doing their thing, uh, which I'll get to later. Um, and there's everyone else that's complaining about the season moving too slow and nothing happening, and... Um, the thing is... Is I complained last week about the seventh episode at first appearing to be too slow. I end up rewatching that episode and enjoying it very, very much. I enjoyed this episode a lot as it aired, um, but when it was over, it did I think show some problems for the season as a whole, at least the, the second half of the season. Um, the thing is, with the first season, once we hit like episode five, the season had this forward momentum that just kept up. Um, straight until Ned's death and, you know, through in the finale. This season, it felt like they, um... They structured it where they knew that the Shadow Baby and Renly's death was gonna, like, end, like, almost like the first half of their storytelling. Um, so if you look at it, you know, John goes to Craster's and leaves Craster's by Episode 4. Danny is in the Red Waste. She gets into Karth by the end of Episode 4. Um... You know, Arya is no longer on the road with Yorn. She's in Harrenhal, and she's Tywin's cupbearer by the end of Episode Four. Um, it's just these things. Everything with Renly that all collides, and that section of the season I thought was really just well, well done. Um, it was just like they they kind of like pegged every hole correctly, um, and it felt that way. Even though it was slower moving or whatever, it just it felt well put together. Since then, they've had episodes that, at least by last year's structure, should have moved, should have taken that, that, um, the Shadow Baby and Renly's death, and everything should have just catapulted. Uh, and it looks like it was starting to. I had problems with episode 5 being, I thought, just a little too much of a, too much going on. Um, I loved episode 6, there's, you know, the stuff with Theon taking Winterfell and the, the ride at King's Landing. Um, you know, John and everyone fighting the Wildlings, and John getting... John and Egret like having to go off, um, like a lot of things happened, and it looked like that the season was gonna just you know ratchet everything up and up until you know episode nine with the battle, and instead they took a step back with episode seven, which was last week, and it looked like they were just taking a breather for a week, like one more you know just one more breath before you you go off the diving board, and um, but this week. You know, like, if last week was taking one more deep breath before leaping off the diving board, this week was almost like uh, someone came in and said, wait a minute, the diving board's broken, we need you to wait an hour before you can dive off. It felt like a, kind of a little bit like a stall pretty much for big stuff. Um, if you get my diving board analogy. But, um, yeah, that's what it felt like, and I thought it was a good episode, um, but... It's, it is, it's an odd thing to have an episode like this that's slower this late in the season. Um, I think it shows some, like, imperfections of what they should have done a couple of things earlier instead of leaving it for this episode, or... You know what, let me just get into it, because this is going to be a long-ass review, so here we go. Alright, at Winterfell, um, the stuff with Yara and Theon, that was actually good, it was a good opening, it was, um... Uh, Theon is complete. Everything with Theon this season has that's one of the exceptions is Theon. His arc is pretty much was strong all the way through and has built up as we've gotten through the season. Um, uh, but his stuff with his sister was really really well done. I thought kind of redeemed her character a little bit from earlier in the season. Uh, makes her worthwhile, I guess, in a way. Um, the brand reveal, um, I'm glad they put it in this episode, they didn't make everybody wait, um, you know, for what is most likely the obvious, even for people that haven't read the books, um, but I, I wasn't really happy that that's what ended the episode, that's not a very strong ending, um, especially with the battle being next week, it should have ended differently, it should have, should have ended with, you know, I thought with, like, Stannis approaching, um, but we'll get to that. Uh, Rob and Talisa, oh, beautiful, um, scenery when they were just walking and speaking. Alan Taylor directed the episode. Alan Taylor is awesome. It sucks that we're losing him to Thor 2. I've said this before. Um, he loves using sunlight and he does it beautifully. Um, 
he, he really, really, really is great. Um, Una Chaplin's long ass speech um, was too long. It, it went on too long. It was a good speech. I liked it. And had the rest of the episode been moving fast and this was like a slower moment, it would have been fine. But it did feel like, ah, we're getting, it happened like late in the episode, like 40, at, you know, I was looking at the clock, it was like 9.40 something, I was like, oh man, this is not exactly the right time for this, or at least it didn't feel that way. Um, although she is the most beautiful woman on this show, definitely. Um, and so I didn't exactly mind it. Um... I did like that they kept kind of how maintaining how wrong what they were what they were about to do was going to be. You could see like Rob was going to jump her any second, pretty much, and they both know it's wrong, but they just you know can't help themselves. Um, it was a nice speech for her character, you know, it gave her some background stuff, but um, it you know it's been building all season, so it wasn't really surprising. And like I said, it just it came too late in the episode. The show's really done stuff like that since the beginning, where ep scenes later on in the episode have been more things that should have been at the beginning of the episode. You think of, like, uh, the Picel scene with Roz in the finale. Uh, they said they had a reason for putting that where it was, but still, it's just, they've done this before with scenes like that. Um, the Catelyn scene, I'm gonna get more into that on the spoiler section. Uh, I will say Michelle Fairley and Richard Madden were both, you know... Again, really, really good. They were just really... You could tell how much they wanted to shout and scream at each other, or, and they just couldn't. Um, uh, so that was nice. But I'll get to that uh, later on. Uh, the Jamie and Brienne thing, they play off... It's basically too fun for words, pretty much. It's there's, You should be doing nothing but looking forward to anything with them. Um, it's a nice change of pace for Jamie and, uh, and Brienne. It's just a nice pairing that I think uh, is going to work out well. Well, I know it's going to work out well. Um, Arya's stuff this week, I thought it was all it was great stuff, but it once again kind of proved that they went too many times to the well with Tywin last week. The stuff that happened this week, I think should have happened last week with her. Um, or at least up until the point before she walks out of uh, Harrenhal. Um, I think, yeah, they just... They, made the stuff with Tywin go on a little too long. It should have just been that stuff this w uh, last week, the um, with him naming Jack and, as uh, the third name. Um, but it was uh, it was great stuff. It was very, very uh, funny. Which, by the way, the episode was very, very funny, with things being in such, like, a mess. Um, the two head writers are really, you know, you can tell they're really, like, witty guys, and... Um, I laughed out loud a lot throughout the episode. Probably more than most comedies that are on television. Definitely more than most comedies on television. Um, so they are witty guys. Uh, anyone that's like unhappy with the way they're writing this stuff, that you got to be happy at least with the, at least with some of the dialogue. Um, yeah. So uh, John and Halfhand and Egret, you know, John's captured with Halfhand. Um, they probably could have gone more. Uh, into what Halfhand is doing with John. Uh, clearly, something's gonna. It's clear they were setting it up for, for the finale, but they should have set it up a little bit better, or just a little bit more. Because I'm sure people are gonna kind of look at it and just be like, "Well, what what are they doing? Like, they maybe they didn't even catch it that you know he's trying to get John to be a mole because John doesn't even know what the hell's going on." Um. But uh, but yeah, the uh, the fist of the first men. It's a nice, funny scene. Those three characters are good enough to get, like, their own little scenes. Sam, Gren, and uh, Delorious Ed. Um, so it is a nice little break from the action. And it was important. It had, you know, some mythology stuff in it, too. Um, but again, very funny. Um, Danny's scene is pretty much what I was talking about with the whole diving board thing. Last week we're here, we're going to the House of the Undying, or that's where she has to go to get her dragons. This week, instead of going, she just basically decides to go. Um, but it was a good scene. Her and uh, Amelia Clark and Ian Glenn had, you know, it was just really, it was well, it well written, it was tender, it was very nice. Uh, I sound like I'm talking about uh, a steak. I'm not. Um... But, um, obviously we're going to the House of the Dying in the finale, uh, but they at least could have left it off with, like, her standing outside the place to give everything a little more, you know, kind of, like, oomph to it. 
Um, yeah, that's all I got on that, really. I know a lot of people are complaining about Danny um, and John this year, but what you kind of have to realize, and this isn't really spoiler for book stuff, but you really kind of have to realize is that you know that Danny and the dra the dragons are going to grow, and Danny is going to get to Westeros eventually. You know that those you know White Walkers and everything is going to show up eventually. Um, but you know that's not going to happen until the stuff in Westeros is settled, which means that everything with John up at the wall and Danny across the sea and the whole White Walker stuff, everything is going to be a stall from now until it happens. It has to be an entertaining stall. That's what they have to do. Um, and they probably, I, I guess they haven't really succeeded that well with either one of those this season. Um, but, um, and that is a problem, but it should be fixed next season. They Believe me, they'll have more interesting, interesting stuff to do. Uh, but you kind of have to understand that it's going to be a stall, and you kind of have to basically live with it if you're going to keep watching this show. Um, you're going to have to kind of hope to enjoy it for its own thing, separate from the rest of the action. They're going to try to link it together with, that, with you know, with whatever dialogue and transitioning they're going to use, but um, you almost do have to look at it as its own separate story. Um, if you can do that, I think you'll probably enjoy it more. Uh, anyway... Uh, King's Landing, Tyrion, Bronn show with uh, Varys is hysterical. Um, I love the pig shit line, setting up the wildfire and stuff from earlier on. You know, like Almost like a couple episodes ago, like two episodes ago. Or three, even. So that was nice. That was awesome. Um, they should have been preparing for the battle, I think, a little bit earlier. Uh, the battle's coming next week. There was barely, like, any planning. He was, like, looking like, oh, look, uh, yeah, Stannis is gonna attack, uh, look, the Mudgate. It's shitty. Stannis is gonna attack that. Let's do something about it. Uh, and that's it. That's his planning. That's, you know, that should have been done a little, uh, a little bit sooner and a little bit better. Um, the, uh, there was a good link to do that. Hold on a second. I live near LaGuardia Airport. That's an airplane flying over my, uh, apartment. Okay, it's gone. Um, the, uh, I was gonna, what was I gonna say? Oh, the, um, they did do a decent link to Daenerys, which is what I was just talking about. I was talking about her dragons and everything growing up. Um, so that was one of the transitions I was talking about with Danny before. But anyway, off track. Um, the scene with Cersei, um, really, really good scene, but it felt like they skipped over an episode because last week she was, like two weeks ago, she was like, I'm gonna hurt you for this. Last week, she was, you know, sympathetic towards him, or just looking very hurt. Like, she should have said something last week, like, don't touch me, when he was gonna, you know, come over and comfort her. Um, because it felt a little, like, too bipolar, which people have having problems with, with her character. And I've been kind of saying that I like it, and I do, but I thought it, it was a little too, too much one way last week, and too much the other way this week. Um with her being, like, such a bitch to him. By the way, they said cunt five times this episode. I counted on the rewatch. So I'm sure that's got to be near a record um, for network television. I, th I mean, I, I don't I don't have, like, Guinness in front of me, but... Um, or a Guinness in front of me, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway. Um, let's see. What am I... Uh, the Tyrion and Shay scene was great work by both actors, especially Dinklage. Um, you almost forget how good he is, and then he just ups it dramatically in uh, that scene. Um, so yeah, just really well done. Uh, Stannis, Stephen Delane is absolutely brilliant. So is Liam Cunningham. Um, I gotta say that... Um, I love. I, I like that they were able to put like some history in. The show is good at doing that. They've gotten better with some of the exposition stuff. Um, this was a fun. Ex it, this exposition pertained to Stannis's motivations at the same time, um, so it worked really well for me. Um, I do need. I think that this that scene that we saw with Stannis sh again, like the Arya scene, should have taken place in last week's episode, because I think Stannis has been gone for too long. And they should have had something in this week's episode with Stannis just being really close to King's Landing, like maybe seeing it um, from the shore. That could have been enough uh, to get everybody excited. It could have just ended on something like that. But, uh, alas, it did not. Um, the I'm not going to get into what 
um, I think of the season as a whole so far. I'll get into that at the end. Um, at the end of the episodes. I know I've been talking about that throughout this episode as if I'm talking about it as a season as a whole. I'll try to not to reiterate that stuff when I do episode 10. Uh, but as far as next week um, is the battle episode. And uh, I think what's interesting is if you look at the show is there are really no, at least for me, episodes that stand out. There are moments in episodes that stand out. Great moments. And some episodes have multiple great moments. But this is an odd show where there's no real standalone episodes. Um, that changes next week. Next week's episode is a standalone. It'll take place in one area, and it will you know pertain to one thing, which is the battle. So, and it's gonna be directed by Neil Marshall, who did The Descent, and has worked with Liam Cunningham a couple of times. Um, written by the author of the books. And I could not. And the best thing about this episode, and I like this episode a lot, but the best thing about it was the preview for next week, and I cannot wait for it. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the spoiler section now, which is she read the book. This is 60 minutes long already. Shit. Uh, so let me just get into it. Okay, so if you stop watching, if you haven't read the book and you don't want to be ruined anything, okay, stop. And okay. Um, all the purists that are saying that they are ruining the books, you need to shut up. Uh, they're not ruining the books. Um, it's such a, such a general observa observation, um, you know, to say something like that. It's, you know, I, I, I hate that criticism. Like, it, you can nitpick the shit out of what they're doing. You can. You really can. And what I think people are doing, they're nitpicking the shit out of it, and then they're adding all those things up, and they're calling it ruining. Um, I just completely disagree with it. You know, I, the first season, the one of the writers, Brian Cogman, said the first book is basically 80 pages an episode. It's perfectly structured to be adapted. This season is probably the most difficult, because A Clash of Kings in 10 episodes, well, it's clearly difficult. You're seeing that it's difficult. I think that will change from now on because A Storm of Swords is going to be split into two seasons, so it'll be a different kind of pace, a less rushed kind of pace, um, at least for the next two seasons. And then A Feast for Crows, Dance of Dragons, forget it. Um, I look forward to seeing those two books cut to, to shreds. And I, I, I love both those books, but I look forward to seeing uh, the fat trimmed on those two completely. So, um, yeah. Um... Let's see. I and mean, the two writers are the writers are learning as they go, you know. So that's why this, you know, it's a bit messy right now. But I think it's going to help in the long run. They're going to see mistakes they made and correct them. I hope so, anyway. Um, and also, you know, when I was reading A Clash of Kings, to be honest, I was kind of bored with the first 250 pages, and then I remember the whole stuff with Renly, and it was holy shit, look at that. Theon stuff was all very interesting, but like before, I knew it. We were at the like, the Blackwater battle, and I'm reading it. And I'm like, oh wait, this is like the climax of the book, isn't it? So that's kind of how the season's gone too, at least for me. Maybe that's just me when I was reading it. Uh, you know, somebody let me know what you think about that. Ugh, 18 minutes already. Okay. Uh, Winterfell. I really thought the Yara casting was the first casting mistake that the show had. I admit that I am wrong. Uh, because she won me over with this episode, where I was able to kind of see Asha for the first time. Because uh, Asha's not a horrible person, and, the, and she just seemed kind of mean and nasty the first couple of weeks. Um, they gave her, like, a heart, at least this week, and it was good. It was well done. Also, it's the last time they're going to see each other till I don't know, season five, maybe? Um, so I think that adds to the power of the moment, definitely. Um, the... Brand stuff in the crypts. Hey, they came back to the crypts. Everyone that was complaining about that, you know, that got nixed. Um, stop complaining about the dire wolves, please. Everyone that's complaining about it, the reason they're not in it is not like a lack of caring by the producers or anything like that. It's money. That's it. It costs money. They want them in in every scene possible, but they just can't do it. So stop complaining about it. It's not negligence of storytelling that they're not there. Um, casting for season three is already underway, so everyone complaining about no reads. We're getting Edmure Tully next year, we're getting Stannis' daughter, and it looks like they're ca they're casting the, you know, 
the short people, which are supposed to be like the reeds, not the like dwarfs or anything like that, but um, we're probably gonna get them. So please, more, stop complaining, God. Um, Lewin's gonna die in the finale, um, which I'm not looking forward to. I'm sure um, Bruce Bolton, he hasn't been cast, he's gonna show up probably with like a helmet on, um, so we won't see his face. Excuse me, so they'll recast for next week, for next season, I guess. Um, okay, with Rob, I love that they gave Rob Brand's line that I really missed from the first episode of the first season about, um, can a man still be brave if he's afraid? And, uh, it, I was really, really happy, uh, to see that. It was just, it was just a nice little, I was waiting to see if they were gonna ever able to work that in with Bran, and the fact that they did with Rob surprised me, I was happy. Um... The whole thing with Talisa, instead of it being, you know, Rob is grieving in the book, and that's why they sleep together, because he's just comforted by her. Um, this, it just seems more like a fuck-up on both of them. Um, that they're just attracted to each other, and they're just young, and just, you know, they're fucking around, and they screwed up. And, um... The one thing about it, that they keep talking about the bridge, and the wedding, and the fray, and everything, all of this leads to Rob, you know, getting it next year, so... Um, but I think Una Chaplin would be worth it, to be honest. Um, yeah, okay. As far as book purists go, I will side with you on one thing, which is what happened with Catelyn. I don't like that they made her release Jamie without her finding out that Bran and Rickon are dead. I think it makes her look weak and stupid, although maybe she's going to kind of tell Rob in the finale that I did it because I was afraid they were going to chop his head off. That's why I released him on top of wanting the girls back. That will soften the blow, I think, a lot. Um, but I really, I, I just, I really, I really, I, it irked me a lot that that's what they did. I, I, I think it just makes her look, I mean, it makes her look stupid in the book because Rob kind of, everyone, I think her brother chastises her for it instead of Rob. But, um... Yeah, I just, I, I, I hated it. I really did. I really, it was the, it's the first, like, change, I think, that they did that I absolutely do not like at all. Um, but I can live with it. I'm not complaining about the entire season because of this one change, like a lot of people. Um, Brian and Jamie thing, awesome. It's already living up to, you know, that hype. I look forward to it next year. Uh, they're going to fight in the finale, it looks like, have their little one-on-one -on -one fight. I don't know if Jamie's going to get his hand chopped off in the finale or not. Will be a good cutoff, no pun intended. Eh, no pun intended. Um, Arya, okay. Um, Alright, so she didn't kill the guard, which I did miss. Uh, although she may do that in the finale. She will be getting the coin in the finale, and I'm sure Jacken will change his face, because that's way too important for them not to do that. The whole faceless man thing is, you know, what she'll have to go through. So I'm sure that'll be in there. Um, again, the whole weasel soup thing, everyone's bitching like, oh, we didn't get, you know, the weasel soup. It was, you know, it's not like it's essential. It really isn't. Uh, they skipped over it. You know, I just... If it was your one of your favorite parts in your book, that sucks. I mean, uh, you know, but... If it's not essential to the... I mean, they... they, they eh. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I don't know what to say. If if it really bothers you, I'm sorry. That sucks. It sucks. It really does. Uh, let's see. John, it's just like I said before. John... Uh, John's story in the second book, like, they're condensing it. Um, yet it feels more drawn out than Rush somehow on the show. Um... But, yeah. Uh, Rattle shirt looks like a He-Man villain. That's okay. Because um, at least he looks warm. I always kind of thought he just kind of had like a bone suit on. Like, that never really made sense to me. He looks a little more cozy. Um, John will kill Half-Hand in the finale. They should have done more, yes, with Half-Hand this episode um, with John. Uh, perhaps we'll get some good stuff next week. But to be honest, John and Half Hand is not as important as John and Egret. So getting John and Egret stuff is more important. They probably had to make a choice and they made it. Um, 
But we're still going to get John killing him in the finale. So, again, people were complaining that that wasn't going to happen. It is going to happen. So, relax. Uh, the Dragon Glass, I was happy to see that. I was happy to see that. I thought we weren't going to get it, but Sam found it, which is appropriate because Sam's going to be the one that uses it. Um, Danny, the House of the Undying, is in the finale. Um, and it should be a finale thing because it's a huge setup for like the rest of the damn show. Um, but, uh, yeah, and like I said before, Danny, you know, when I. To me, reading Danny as a stall didn't really occur to me until the fifth book. Because the second book, she's only got five chapters, and you kind of don't realize that, you know, she hasn't been in it that much. So you don't think of it as, like, George is stalling. Um, and plus, the House of the Undying chapter is so good that you kind of feel like that one chapter almost makes her whole section of the second book just, you know, worth it. Uh, and the third book, her stuff is so good with everything at Mirren and her taking over places that it doesn't feel like a stall because it's entertaining, like what I said. The fifth one, it feels like a stall because she's just sitting on her ass doing nothing. So it's a stall. Um, the show, however, yes, already it does feel like they're stalling with it and they've expanded on it. Um, that's what happens when you adapt something from a book. It, you know, it feels more like they're, they're just stalling. Um... But, I still look forward to the house and then dying. Uh, King's Landing, there's no chain uh, that they're preparing for, it looks like. Unless it's just going to show up randomly at the battle uh, next week. Um, I like that they're using the pronouncing the names. That was funny. Uh, it seems to be an ongoing joke from like readers to the show. Like, how do you pronounce this shit? Uh, Roz being the... What's the prostitute's name? Alaya Chatai? Ch 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 I don't remember. Um, I know people were annoyed that they didn't cast her, but it really... They, Tyrion would have had no interaction with her. Um, I do believe he gave Roz that necklace in the first season, or she talked about it. Um, so, you know, at least Roz was useful um, in the long run, I guess. Um, the Shay stuff, it was just like facepalm city, because he's talking about how I'm going to have to kill for you. I'm like, yeah, you're going to... Kill your dad, and you're gonna choke her to death, and yeah, what else? Uh, oh, her, him just saying that she's his and everything like that. I was just like Jesus Christ. Um, uh, it was too bad they cut out Tyrion's Tommen line to Cersei about saying that you know Tommen is gonna get raped, and he's like, I'll do it myself. I guess it was a little too harsh for the show. Um, but that was a good scene. They cut down some of his speech to her a little bit, but can you do? Okay, one more complaint. The Sansan San people. We're, gonna get, we're probably going to get the Little Bird stuff next week. I'm sure we are. If we don't, you can complain to George who wrote the episode. Honestly, the Sansan San stuff on the show, it would be a little too creepy, probably. They're doing some of it. And also, people, after the after book two, there is no Sansan San stuff. Like, the Hound mentions it, like, crying to Arya in the third book and stuff like that, but it's not like it's this thing that's important through the rest of the series. Unless the Hound and Sansa come back in the end and something happens with it. So, I, you know, people just like it, like it because of it's like a preference. But they're acting like it's this huge, huge thing that's been cut out that's important to the plot. Um, if you want to say it's important to Sansa's character, I guess you can say that, but, you know, uh, that's not what people really sound like what they're complaining about. They just want their Sans Hand stuff. Anyway. Um, Stannis makes Davos' hand in the third book, so that was a change. Um, by the way, I always saw Mark Strong as Stannis, uh, but I don't know how I could see anyone else other than uh, Delane now. Um, Alright, I have to stop this review. This is almost 30 minutes. Uh, next week's episode is the, the Blackwater episode. It's going to be awesome. Um... Okay, let me know what you thought. That's all I got this week. This is way too long, so complain about that if you must. Adios.